Hello everyone. Welcome to our podcast series Sign Up for the Future, designed to inform students and young professionals about the many career pathways within the data sciences field. My name is Shruti and I'm your host today. As the whole world is currently facing the COVID-19 pandemic, it is evident that data scientists are at the forefront of communication, bringing information on important statistics and disease outcomes to the scientific community as well as to the general public. Through our podcast episodes, we aim to bring data science professionals such as epidemiologists, research scientists and innovators, biostatisticians, science communicators and policy makers to talk about their careers, which have certainly had a huge impact in fighting the pandemic. This show is produced by Careers Infinite and sponsored by the Rising Youth Grant administered by Taking IT Global, the Government of Canada and Canada Service Corps. Today for our very first episode we are speaking to Dr. Pascal Tyrell. He is a data scientist, a combination of research methodologist, computer and database solutions architect and innovator. He is the director of data science with the Department of Medical Imaging and associate professor with the Institute of Medical Science and the Department of Statistical Sciences at the University of Toronto. His research interests focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning in medical imaging. Dr. Tyrell has previous work experience in the computer and financial industries, has joined the medical device tech startup company ASH Incorporated as their chief science officer and is the CEO and co-founder of the software startup company Softex Innovations Incorporated. Dr. Tyrell, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy to be here. So, let's start with the basics. Um, how would you describe what a data scientist does to say a 12 year old so that's probably one of the most difficult questions you're going to ask uh, in this interview is my guess it's not always easy to uh, explain data to young children um, but I'll give it a go and uh, data is essentially a collection of of facts uh, which can be numbers words uh, measurements observations and basically they're descriptions of things. And the data scientist looks for relationships in the data in order to help people understand a process or a concept. Um, let me just give you an example. Let's say it's raining. So the data is going to be how much rain, um, how frequently it rains, what's the temperature, how humid it is, that's the data you collect. You're describing what's going on. Now, the information, so the data scientist is going to, from the data, produce information through analysis. And what he or she will derive is that, for instance, the temperature dropped a few degrees, five degrees, let's say. Uh, and at the same time, humidity went up by, let's say, five to 10% in the last hour, and then it rained. And so from this, we have information from the data. And so this describes what's going on. And when you then take that information, you can have the next step, if you wish, which would be knowledge. And that is when there's a quick increase in humidity, and at the same time, there's a drop in temperature, then you get rain. So that's just the progression. Um, the last one, if you, if you, I'm sure you've heard possibly that data, information, knowledge, and wisdom progression. The last one's wisdom, uh, which is just you know a culmination of all the knowledge that you're going to put together. Um, and I, I've got to say, I don't believe it's necessarily linear. Not everybody. Uh, believes that uh, you have this data to information to knowledge to wisdom. I don't think it's that easy, but it's a good way to describe uh, what we do as data scientists, and especially for uh, younger, um, you know, people, <laughs> uh, it's easier for them uh, to comprehend. That's probably the best way I would describe what we do. Thank you for breaking that down. That was really a good way to visualize um, what a data scientist does. I understand you're involved in many different projects and that you have a number of grad students. Um, there is information available on uh, many of your programs, such as My Data, My VIP, and My B programs. Um, all of these are available on your website. 
Could you talk a little bit about each of these programs um, and tell us what your expectations are from eligible candidates who may apply to these programs? Of course. So as I'm sure you've noticed, um, all of my programs start with MI, which stands for medical imaging. So there's my VIP, my, you know, my B, so MIB, um, and my data. Um, so the the umbrella, I guess the umbrella uh, program is called my data, and that is the data science program uh, for the department. Um, the my VIP is medical image volunteer internship program, and that's my volunteer program, which I started many years ago. And the reason I did was because there was a need uh, for people um, who were interested in getting into data science, but had absolutely no idea what to do or how to do it. And it was an outlet uh, for me uh, to share, basically to get people interested in getting into data science. And so that was the, the MIVIP. Uh, then I had, of course, students that came to me from high school and said, hey, I'd love to be involved. And I was like, well, you know, the, the VIP program is for university students. Um, and, and it's, you know, you, you need to be a university student. However, uh, why, why would I say no to high school students? And so I started the Medical Image Buddies program. And that was the MIP. Um, beyond that, uh, there's one other, you know, I guess, um, sub program that we call um, the my stats plus ml so that's of course as you can imagine medical imaging statistics uh, plus machine learning and that's the program that focuses uh, basically exclusively on uh, statistics and uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning so all of these programs as you can imagine are all interlinked um, and it's really just a way of getting people to find the right flavor of data science that they're interested in. And uh, you've asked, you know, who can be, uh, you know, who should apply and, and what uh, is their background? You know, the, the easiest way to answer that uh, is, is pretty much you have to have an academic flavor to learning. And when I say academic, I just mean that you're very interested in, you know, the theory how it happens, why it happens. You, you, you tend to ask more questions. Um, of course, because I am involved in innovation, um, I'm also very interested in the application and the impact. So oddly enough, even though I say I'm very interested in the, in the academic uh, you know, flavor of learning, I'm also very interested in having um, people want to apply whatever their research is about uh, and have impact on um, basically society. And so that's called knowledge translation. Um, and that's I'm very interested in that as well. So I guess that's the kind of the, the two sides uh, of what I look for when I, I bring people on board. That's great. It's amazing that there are these programs for different levels of, um, you know, education background. And I did not know that you had a program for high school students as well, which is, I mean, probably the right time in this day and age to introduce students to data science. Definitely. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, there is there is no wrong age <laughs> to getting <laughs> involved in uh, data science. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll just tell you a small little story. When I started, uh, you know, when I finished my studies, I was... Uh, not I did not consider myself a data scientist, and for the very good reason that not really anybody did. <laughs> you know, there. You know, what was a data scientist? You know, who? What is data science? You know, I was either it was either math or statistics or engineering, um, or computer science, uh, and so I was a weirdo. You know, when I when I was working. Um, people just thought I was weird because I had such an interest in data. Um, and then, of course, uh, big data came around. And and so inevitably, we kind of people would turn to me and say, well, hey, weren't you involved in all that data weird stuff? And I'm like, yeah, you know, hey, yeah, that's me, you know. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of years later, everything morphed. It became artificial intelligence and machine learning. And so at that point, I was a data scientist. And it was just really funny that I, you know, I never called myself a data scientist, but all of a sudden I was because, you know, that's what I had worked as a computer scientist in, in the computer industry. I was a statistician, I, you know, as a medical researcher. So I, I was already kind of doing all that. And 
voila, I was a data scientist. That really sort of makes a nice segue into my next question, which is basically about your career um, pathway. I did read on on a blog post interview that you had given um, how to become a data scientist by Subeta Rehman. It's available on medium.com. So in this article, you did clearly say that your career trajectory um, was not straightforward. So is this a very common thing in data science careers? Um, are there others that you can think of who've sort of taken this kind of long-winded road? Um, I'm I'm going to answer yes. Uh, I don't necessarily know that much. You know, I mean, I obviously know uh, that my friends that are data scientists and I've been in the field for a while. Um, I suspect yes, uh, definitely. But I also suspect that, that it's changing. Um, you know, the earlier data scientists uh, just as I, as for me, I, they just didn't know they were data scientists. They were, you know, working as uh, statisticians, let's say, and they just took a particular interest on how computers could help uh, curate data, for instance, or help them um, do analyses of very, very large data sets that, you know, where the data was coming in um, with a, you know, high velocity of data and, uh, changed a lot and, and had a lot of variables. And you're like, wow, how do I, how do, I do that? Um, and so they, they just started working on it and then they all of a sudden became data scientists. However, today, I think it's less so because there's now programs in universities for data scientists, right, to learn data science. And so it, it is changing. But yes, I, I think it, it is. And I, I actually think, uh, and once again, this is my own opinion. I, I think that the good data scientists are actually coming from uh, a diverse or different path. I, I don't think it's someone who's necessarily uh, extremely good at, at math. I, I truly believe you need to appreciate the data. Uh, and, and that's often missed in data science, that people think, oh, as long as you're good with math, as long as you're good with numbers, as long as you can run programs you're going to be a rock star. But actually, it's not usually the case because understanding how the, you know, the data works, what's important in the data, where are the flaws in the data, where can there be problems, biases that you have to be aware of, that's all content. And if you don't, if you don't have that piece, um, then you're going to be somebody who's going to have this wonderful tool in their toolbox called data science, but you're just going to have nowhere to apply it. And that's, I think that's such a shame um, and so, you know, to answer your question, there's a lot of, um, you know, pathways to data science that starts from the content. So meaning they're in, for instance, business and um, they've been in business for 15 years and they've been working with it for a long time. And they just suddenly decide, you know what, I, I really I want to do more with with this data that I really understand a lot about. And I'm going to go back and study computer science and maybe some, you know, some stats or whatever, um, so that I can I can solve my own problems. And they become those data scientists that that really make a difference. In, in my opinion, once again, right? I don't want to be knocking, you know, all the the different departments that are producing data scientists, but uh, that's from my experience as well. Sure. So I was actually under the impression that it may have been easier for you to become a data scientist because you have the background in statistics and you were a trained statistician. But from what you're saying, sounds like that isn't the case. <laughs> so maybe I've already answered that question. Um, so I'm getting, you know, the, if you ask a statistician anything, their answer should be, it depends. <laughs> always, right? Because it depends on your assumptions, depends on the test you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. So joking aside, um, I'm going to say um, no, but maybe. So understanding data is, of course, super important. Uh, and statistics training will teach you how to study data. So that's, you know, that's a no brainer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in the example of what a data scientist does, um, essentially, you're studying relationships. So as you know, uh, math functions are relationships. They're relationships between random variables. And so when you're studying relationships, you need to A, understand what you're doing. You need to understand the math. So the statistics will definitely help in that. Um, and the fun starts when the number and the complexity of the relationships become too difficult 
for your brain to keep track of. That's the bottom line, right? And sadly, this happens much sooner than you think. And that's the reason we rely on CPUs and GPUs to do to do data scientists, uh, do data, data scientist work. Um, and that's also the basis for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, I guess because I, I knew how to work with data, I knew how to manipulate data, I knew how to analyze data, um, you know, becoming a data scientist was was probably easier for me. Uh, so what I'm, I'm going to say is, yeah, once again, it depends. Do you have to have that training in order to become a data scientist? No. Uh, is it nice to have? Yes, I, I would say it is nice to have if you do have that knowledge. And I'm going to put one other little caveat in it. If you if you uh, do too much, too too focused, too specialized work uh, in, let's say, statistics or in math, for that matter, or computer science or engineering, um, you may actually miss the boat because data science is a collaborative science. It's not something typically that one person can do. There are maybe the few that can really truly say they are expert at all areas uh, in data science, but it's quite rare. So it is nice to think that uh, data science is a collaborative uh, you know, research area where you need to work with other people that are better than you in certain domains. Um, and so that's another, I guess, point to take into consideration that if you specialize too much so you're as you said you know if you're a statistician and you um and you've worked many years in it and you're excellent at it you you may have almost gone too far right where it's going to be hard for you to pull back and say well wait a minute as a data scientist i also need to be good at this and this and this and i'm gonna to have to retrain in this area and anyway so that's just a little caveat on that coming from a life science background myself I do think it's essential that we take a biostatistics course, and it is part of every um, academic syllabus. In your opinion, how should that biostatistics course um, sort of complement the life science education? Um, I, I actually, I mean, I'm biased because I teach it, but it, I think it's crucial. I, I really do. Um, and the reason for that is in introductory biostatistics courses, uh, or just plain statistics courses, you learn about data. And that you, you have to think, okay, where am I going to learn the basics about data? Um, and in my opinion, it is there. And the reason for that is in, in data science, there are basically three pillars, right? Uh, one of them is math. One of them is your content, as we talked about the content area. Uh, and one of them is computer science. And so the intersection between math and the content area is called statistics. So it's a it's basically applied math is statistics. And so when you take a statistics course, you learn about data and inevitably you also have to learn about the data because if you don't understand the variables you're putting in your model, what are you doing, right? And so that's why I think biostatistics is important for the the data scientists. The the other intersections are important as well, you know, for instance, content and computer science, as I just described, you know, the 80% of, of your time, that's data processing, right, between those two. And then between math and computer science is your machine learning, which is kind of a new, exciting way of, of doing things. Um, but overall, you know, you need the intersection of all of those areas to make um, data science. And so, of course, I'm, I'm uh, you know, biased, but I would say, yes, statistics is key. Um, learning, um, you know, a, a new uh, computer language, a computer programming language, uh, learning your your basic math, all of that you're going to do, I would suspect anyway, if you want to be a data scientist, but often missed maybe is the statistics side, the applied statistics side, because as I said, the, the applied statistics side is going to bring you closer to the content and you know, understanding the content area, which I, I really do believe is crucial. So yes, definitely take a stats course. Um, on your website, I saw that there was a, a course, Biostatistics in a Nutshell. Um, so is this course open to all or is it specific for people taking your My Data or any of the other medical imaging programs? So uh, thanks to COVID, it's now available to all. Uh, so it's interesting. I've been teaching biostatistics in a nutshell for, for many years with my, my colleague, Paul Corey, who's, who's a professor emeritus at, at the University of Toronto. 
and um, it's a condensed course. So we do we only do six sessions, and we basically pack in a full introduction to biostatistics in that time. And the reason we did that is because we often teach people from the faculty of medicine. So they're residents or fellows, and they're often on call or they're, you know, they're busy on the wards. And, and so they can't come for like the full 10 weeks and do all the assignments and all that stuff. So we, we condense the course. Now, when COVID-19 came around, we had to put the course online and I've opened it up to the public because I'm happy uh, you know, if anybody were to listen to my lectures, I'm happy uh, <laughs> because <laughs> statistics is so un- not popular uh, that uh, I'm h- happy to share it with everybody. That's really wonderful. Moving on to the other pillar of data science, um, computer science. Do you recommend that students who are enrolled in a life science course or a, a biostatistics course um, also learn to code on the site? Um, I would say yes. Um, I guess it would be it would be bad for me to say no. However, having said that, if you're very adverse to coding, could you still be you know in data science and not have coding skills? Yes. Will you have to understand how computer programming works? Yes. Should you take uh, a coding course? Yes. <laughs> so definitely, it's a definite yes. Uh, but it's not a super strict requirement. Um, you know, someone who's in their 20s, you know, or their teens, and they're at university, not wanting to learn Python, and they're interested in data science, I think that'd be a bit silly. So I guess it just depends on on where you're at. So the younger you are, I would say basically the younger you are, the, the higher the requirement to learn coding. Um, and I would, the only language I would recommend for anyone starting out is Python. Definitely. Let's switch topics a little bit and talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, In your opinion, what is the role of data scientists in handling the current pandemic? So that, that's an easy one. So now you've asked me an easy question. (laughs) Um, It's to find the needle in the haystack of data. That's what we do, right? And just think of how much data is being collected every minute of every day about this pandemic. Who is looking for that key relationship that is going to have an impact on the management of this pandemic, COVID-19, or future pandemics? I mean, that's kind of the key. It's almost too late for the current pandemic because by the time you collect the data and you curate it and you start doing your analysis and, you know, uh, there'll be a vaccine and we'll all be good and it will be gone, right? So... What are we really working towards? We're working towards finding solutions for the future. So the next pandemic. And, you know, most, if if not all research groups um, will now include a data scientist. No, I, I really believe no matter where you go, who you ask, uh, if you say, hey, you, uh, you know, you're working on a COVID-19 project. Wow, fantastic. Do you have a data scientist? I, w- I would say most probably yes. And if not, they have that phone a friend option, you know, like where they say, well, we don't have one officially, but I got a buddy who's a data scientist. <laughs> uh, I think it's it's certainly a necessity. But that's, yeah, that's an easy one. It's it's really, um, you know, finding that needle in the in the haystack of uh, enormous haystack of data is is what uh, is our is the crucial role of the data scientist. All right. So let's close with A question about what's yet to come. So how do you envision data science encompassing all aspects of life in the future? And what would your advice be uh, for students to prepare themselves um, for success tomorrow? Uh, So that's, that's a, you know, a little bit of a harder question because you're asking, you know, I'm getting out my crystal ball, right, of what's going to (laughs) happen. So the data science will definitely be part of every aspect of our lives. Uh, uh, that's what I believe, but not necessarily explicitly. So it won't be obvious to you, but it will inform, I think, every aspect of our lives. Um, and the reason I, I I say that not explicitly is because I think uh, data science will be doing things that people just won't even realize it. You know, they, they, won't, they won't realize that that information came from data science, you know, from collecting data and analyzing and looking for the relationships um, was something that, uh, you know, came from that, uh, that work, that type of work. And then now they're applying it in what they think 
is completely you know devoid of of data science but I, d- I just don't believe that that's going to be possible. I think you truly need to embrace data science. So it doesn't matter who you are on the planet today. Um, you need to embrace data science. I, I just think, you know, if, if it's, it's not going away, it's really, truly not ever going to go away. So if you are technology adverse, I'm not saying rush out and buy all the technology you can and force yourself to enjoy it. No, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, where you do need to use a computer or you do need to use your smartphone, appreciate what it does for you and make it work for you, right? So only use it to the way that you enjoy using it and how you will benefit from it. If you fight it or if you don't believe it, it's, it's you're going to lose. There's, there's absolutely no way you can do anything but lose. And so that's what I would I would give in terms of um, advice is, is I would say, you know, look for ways to enjoy technology so that it's it's productive for you it helps you in terms of moving your career forward your education forward use it as as the tool it should be uh, and i think then uh, you you will benefit from it um, but i i do think that uh, you know the the like my children for instance uh, will definitely benefit from all of this fun that we're going through now you know, like in 10, 15 years from now, I think the advances are going to be just stunning, you know, between now and like five, 10 and 15 years from now, it's going to be amazing. I really do think it's going to be fun times uh, to see how technology improves and how artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to uh, pretty much revolutionize things. I I, I really do uh, believe that, believe that. Um, so just just keep an eye on it it's going to be it's it's absolutely going to be crazy <laughs> but that's really exciting so let's end on that note <laughs> dr <laughs> tyrell thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today and for sharing these beautiful insights ah you're very welcome it was a, a pleasure being here and uh, i look forward to uh, you know hearing from I uh, hopefully from some of your some of your audience uh, on uh, what they've done in data science. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you. That was Dr. Pascal Tyrell, Director of Data Science with the Department of Medical Imaging and Associate Professor with the Institute of Medical Science and the Department of Statistical Sciences at the University of Toronto. Learn more about him and his cool projects on tyrellforinnovation.ca. That is T Y R R E L L numeral four I N N O V A T I O N dot C A. Be sure to tune in to our next podcast episode to continue to learn about data science careers. Check out www.careersinfinite.com to find links to all the episodes of this podcast series, sign up for the future or subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. A big thank you to our sponsors, Taking IT Global, the Government of Canada, and Canada Service Corps for supporting our project. Thank you all for listening.